Diamond Star 526 Delta Sierra Ground, runway 20, taxi out. Sierra Bay Alpha, 526 Delta Sierra. Okay. Warrior 09 Tango, clear touch and go, runway 20. Alright, we're checking. So you see this little line here with the dots on one side? And what that means is we can't pass that point unless the tower tells us we can. If we came out here and we didn't call them, we'd be in trouble. Archer 382 Delta, continue on the Dow, and I'll right, you gotta try steering it? Yeah. All right, just put your feet on the pedals. You'll see right at the top, there's a little brake that's over the top. Push on that top, it'll go one way or the other. See, I'm gonna go this way. There you go. Five, keep her over on the center turn line. Final. That Your line, over here, lane. get back over here. See how you push on the right when it goes right? There you go, we wanna stay on this center line. Hold both of them down. You shouldn't be holding any down unless you want to steer. There you go. See how what took off? You just kind of tap the one you, direction you want it to go. Okay. All right, so we want to go. Just I'll go with you here because I have controls too, right? Yeah. So just over. All right, and there. Now we just want to keep it right about there. So we're just going to play with the brakes a little bit. Be a far flight falling in there. Right on that line. There you go. Four one eight five Lima affirmative taxi to runway two zero via Alpha. The winds are calm. Altimeter three zero one four. It's your natural. Diamond Star 526 Delta Sierra, runway 20, clear for takeoff. Takeoff on 20, 526 Delta Sierra. All right. Uh, Warrior 09 Tango, clear to land, runway 20, traffic to Diamond Star departing. All right, clear to land, runway 2009 Tango. Archer 382 Delta, turn right on Echo and taxi Alpha to the ramp. Have a good day. Turn right on Echo, taxi Alpha to the ramp. I'm sorry, did you want to go back to the runway for you? I would like to. Okay, that's fine. Taxi back to the 2 0 Alpha. 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 is the airspace around Concord. To fly in there, we have to talk to Concord. The solid line is actually above us. That's Charlotte's airspace for the big airport. So to fly in that, we would have to contact them. It's much harder to fly in there. They don't like you up there. That's what, you know, airliners coming in and everything. Yeah. In the old days, you didn't have any of this. You had to use the map and figure out where you were, how high you were, and keep track of all this stuff. It's a lot easier. How do you figure that out with no GPS? You just have to look around look and try to spot a lake or something? You got to watch points on the ground, use headings and a timer to know how, how far you've gone, that kind of stuff. It was much more difficult. Oh, wow. And um, would ATC like yell at you if you were off course? Because like... Well, they might, but the thing is, I have to be tuned into a certain frequency, for instance, to talk to Charlotte. So if I go flying through their airspace and I'm out of their frequency, they have no way to get a hold of it. Oh. They do know who I am because this plane trans got its tail number. And it means people know, um, and I will probably get a phone call later that I've done something incorrect. Oh, gotcha. You want to try your hand at her? All right, so put your feet on the rudders. You shouldn't have to do much with those right now. Just grasp the stick. The button right here in the front, that's the radio button, so don't push that. The cutter got it trimmed out, so just kind of get a feel. We want to stay at this 3,000 altitude. And it's your controls. You're flying a plane. An experiment with a little turn here and there. Now when you turn, 
You have to give it a little back no, pressure. Leaving no, altitude. Just a little. You're climbing now, so let, let that pressure, there you go, let that pressure off. Clear for takeoff and right turn out the groove just for making through the problem. And when you're sitting there, you steer with your left hand. Because you would have to have your right hand free. See how we're, we're diving now? So let's pull back a little bit. Here we are. Let's steer off to the right now. Let's go right. They're not quite so steep. There we go. There you go. Right about in there. That's a steer. Right, then we're going to pull back. Feel how it's diving on you. When you, when you bank the plane to turn, it loses some of its lift. Because it's using that lift to make the turn. And then the last control service is your is your rudder. And you can use this to help. You see that little block that's under the pyramid? Yep. Whatever side of the pyramid that block is on, that's how you push the rudder. So in other words, let me push on the rudder. If I do this, see how the block goes? If I do that, see how the block goes? So whatever side it's on, that's all it does. It's turning the plane like that. But you're doing really well holding the altitude. That's usually what most people, they always dive in a turn. I want jinx you. Then we can, this is our, that's called a bug. These little blue things are called bugs. And I can reset the heading bug just by pushing that, and then that gives you a nice helpful indicator on oh, where cool. you are. Nice. That's the same thing with the altimeter. It just, it's just a visual reminder is all it's doing. That's pretty fun. Isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's straight out. So you can see, Right here on the screen, there's a little tower that's yellow. And what that means is you're, you're I think it means you're within 500 feet of him. Look over to your left, you can see him. He's right there. Oh, yeah. The tower is almost as high up in the air as you. So generally, if it's yellow, and definitely if it's red, but if it's yellow, we steer clear. You can feel any time we go by a little bit of wispy cloud or anything, that's that bumping. Uh, because what clouds are is basically the top of the turbulence. Oh, okay. Oh, there'd be a little disturbed column of air coming up from the ground, and when it gets warm, or, I'm sorry, when it gets cold enough, it condenses into a cloud. So, whenever you're in a cloud, that's why it's a bump here, it's a little more turbulent. And when you're under the clouds, it's usually, once you get above them, it's usually very smooth because the turbulence has stopped at, at the cloud there. As you can see, here's all the guys that are around us, and it tells us he's 100 feet higher than we are. Oh. And that one's, he's 400 feet lower than we are. So, it kind of helps. In addition, now not everyone has this technology on their plane to broadcast, um, so you still have to look outside. Uh, but it does help a bunch to help see these guys. Um, so that's the Lake Norman Dam right there. You see the water just kind of stops. Yeah. It's a, it's a good landmark, so we know where. You see that blue line right there? That's that's it's called the shelf. So that's the Charlotte shelf. You can see it's right over that. It's actually just past that. Dam. Yeah. As we stay this side of that, nobody's getting hollered. All right, so we've got a blue flashing light here, and that's going to tell me to change the tanks. So we have a tank in each wing. We cannot draw out of both tanks at the same time. We can only pull out of one at a time. So we have to keep switching back and forth to keep them balanced. Oh, okay. But we have a timer built in here, and it'll pop up to remind us to, hey, change the tanks, everything balanced. I see. Can I try changing altitude down to 2,500? Sure, sure, that's fine. Not too fast. Alright, I'm back a little bit. We don't want to get that so fast. Oh, okay. Alright, but that, so this right here, that's called your vertical speed. That's how fast you're moving up or down. Oh, okay. But when we descend, maybe 500. So right now you're climbing at 400. So if you push her down, pop it. There you go. You try to keep her about 5 to 6. If you get going too fast, it makes your passenger nervous. Your ears will pop. And you might get the plane going too fast for uh, what you're doing. There you go. And generally, we're flying around, but generally when we lose altitude, the other thing you would do is pull power back. So you don't need to have the power setting for level flight that you do to lose. If you wanted to descend, all right, say you wanted to get out of 2500. Oh, okay. So pull the power back a little bit, and then put the nose down, and just let her go down. That way we keep our speed relatively the same. You see, it's a little easier too to hold that 500 feet per minute if that prop isn't just pulling you towards the ground. Right. But once you get down to where you where you want to be, then we push the power back. Oh, okay. Cool. It's kind of similar to driving a car. The aspect is when you come up to a corner, you don't keep your foot dead on. Well, I don't. You keep your foot dead on the accelerator. You might let out a little bit, and then into the corner you'll you'll pick up. Right. So there's your. I've seen that. We'll bring your power back in. 
I see. Interesting. You feel how when the power comes in, the nose kind of wants to go up, right? Yeah. So with this trim, this is called the trim wheel. And what this does is you adjust this to kind of get the plane to stay level without you pushing or pulling on the stick. Oh, okay. See how it went down? And if I pull back, it goes up. So if you leave it just normal, a lot of times you may be having to push down on the nose to keep her level. This, this relieves that pressure. When do you use the rudder versus the stick to steer? Like what? Um... Uh, you, the rudder is not for steering. Uh, it's, it's the official term to, to counteract adverse yaw. When you turn the plane, it wants to it wants to cock this way. Yeah. Opposite way you're turning, and you're using the rudder to get rid of that. So oh, okay. the, the rudder is, is just helping with the turn. You're not really using it as a primary turning agent. I see. Would be worried if the airspeed goes in the yellow? Does that mean we can pull it back or well, fine? Yellow is okay as long as you're in smooth air. Oh, if you okay. start getting in bumpy air, you're not supposed to go in the yellow because you might damage the airframe. I see. Green is good. White is the arc where we can start using our flaps. Those things out of the wings that we talked about. If you get below the green or the white, you see where they both stop? Yeah. That's where you stall. That means there's no more lift on the plane. Right, we're touring the tower down to 526 downstairs, 10 north, and south. Every 526 downstairs, Concord, reporting 3 miles on runway 20, outcome 3014. Alright, so what he's told us is we're going to come over here and we're just going to go straight in for landing. A lot of times you'll do what's called a pattern, where you'll make this kind of horseshoe uh, shape. Huh. Uh, since we're coming in from up here, so now he's told me, now remember I told him we're going to stay off the center line of the runway. Now he's told me basically go to the center line of the runway. Okay. And you're cleared in here. You're coming on approach for landing. Is there a particular like um, uh, recommended uh, speed of descent and like where you should be cruising at approach? The Fair 4100 off gun for runway 20. Depending on the type of approach you're doing, there is something called a pattern altitude, which is a thousand feet above the ground. So at this airport, that's 1,700 feet. So have you noticed, I've been gradually descending down. Okay. Runway 20, third land. Third land, 20, left 6 Runway triple step right off that go out. All right, so now we're going to turn in towards the runway. So I got down to my 1,700, so now we're on approach. We're slowing her down. All right, so as we get closer, you're going to see a row of lights on the left side of the runway. They're white and red. Two, two white and two red. There's four of them. Two white and two red it means we're on the glide path. You see, we're, we're where we're supposed to be. All red means we're low. All white means we're hot. Oh, interesting. I got one, one white, three red. That means I'm a little yeah. low. Also a little fast. I'm just going to hold everything level here. It slow down and I'll build some altitude. Where's the stall horn? That one. Uh, but you want to stall when you land, right? You don't want any more lift. You want to zip. Right. That's how you land a plane. Oh, cool. Bring her in, keep her just nose up. Start picked up here okay. right off at Echo Alpha to the ramp. Echo Alpha to the ramp. Have you been? Um, Mission commit. You just kind of keep that nose up, let the speed bleed off until she just touches down. 